So here's the uh, kit that I received from uh, PropWash Sim for their radio kit. Uh, it comes in a fairly small package. It's well packaged, has a card in there with uh, pretty clear uh, instructions on how to build the kit. Here are the contents of the kit uh, expanded out so that you can get a look at what exactly is in the kit. It includes a dual encoder uh, with uh, a board to uh, connect that with jumpers. It includes the uh, printed circuit board, the character displays and the drivers, all the header pins that you need, and the button. It does not include the leads that you'll need, so you need to find some uh, jumpers to connect everything up. And uh, the equipment to put it together. So I'm all done soldering. I soldered uh, one board. Uh, Prop Wash sent me, uh, Kyle sent me one already soldered and I used uh, kind of that as an example and soldered the other one. Believe me, I'm no expert at soldering but I was able to do it in about 30 minutes. I would suggest that you have a, real, a good soldering station with a nice sharp point on it and also a uh, visor if you're an old guy like me uh, it, it looks, uh, those little dots look pretty close together. But uh, they went together well and the instructions were clear and uh, no problems building them. Now I'm going to fire it, fire it up. It took a little while to get the leads all hooked up because I daisy chained off this Arduino Uno I have. I uh, daisy chained these two together. So all four of the uh, LCD character displays are on the same uh, circuit, if you will. I'm using, you know, he uh, normally uses. Uh, Art Sim or SimVim to uh, to run it. I, I'm a, of course you may know I'm a, a affiliated with uh, Air Manager, so I, I we added the the Arduino and uh, uh, I offered to Kyle to try to get it running uh, on that too, so that would be an option. So he sent me uh, one kit and one uh, completed board, and I've got them daisy chained together. Now I made an instrument to run these and I'll show you that in a minute but let's fire this thing up here and see what happens I will open the panel and here we go okay so as you can see there's a an encoder dual encoder attached to the uh, radio on the left you can see the frequencies are the same. I'll move the, uh, I'm just going to turn the uh, encoder there, here, and you can see, I'll turn it on this side, you can see the standby is done. I'll do the small digit, I'm doing this in my hand while I hold the camera. You can see that changing, I can't do that quite as easily. But uh, you can see it's corresponding, so that's working great. And let's hit the, the little transfer button here. I'm going to show you the screen first because my finger's in the way, and then I'll do it here. So you can see that's working now. Let's try the other encoder. Now, it just so happened the encoder I have has a push button. I didn't do it, but I think I'm going to add a function on there to, to uh, maybe uh, turn the radio on and off or to uh, uh, open the ident. Really could do anything. Okay, there's the big knob. You can see that, and I'm uh, turning that. And let's get the small knob. Yeah, working in the right direction. So everything's hooked up correctly. Let's try the transfer on that one. Yep. So the cool thing is this is running on uh, Air Manager. So uh, Air Manager has a, I'm going to show you this little uh, script that I wrote here. And I'm going to open it up. Okay, so I'm going to uh, open this script. You can see the instrument there. Uh, I will open the script and show you a little bit of what's going on. Basically, uh, the new version of Air Manager allows to set hardware uh, user properties. So what this says is I'm going to associate a certain uh, uh, hardware property. In other words, one of the uh, functions, for example, the uh, let's say in this case, it's the uh, digital in for the, uh, the uh, LCDs. And I've got uh, just some promptings and it suggests a D2, digital D2, Arduino Mega and so on and describes it. And I've done that for every uh, every function. Now, on this thing there's uh, three pins for the uh, digital displays because the two are daisy chained. And then there's uh, the uh, encoders have each four pins or two pins for each encoder, two four pins for each dual encoder. So there's eight there. 
then there's the two push buttons. And uh, when you add it all up, it pretty much uses, uses all the digital pins on a Nano or an Uno. Uh, but I can run the uh, switchovers or I can run any of it on an analog too using Air Manager. So let me go show you what this looks like. Uh, basically what it does is it, uh, it has functions here that it accomplishes whenever, uh, for example, the hardware button, I called it COM transfer. When that is pressed, it, uh, it gets the user property for the COM transfer, that ID that we had before, and then it knows which pin that it's going to send that uh, signal to. So that way, uh, anyone, as I'll show you here, I can take uh, the panel here and I can open this and look at the, uh, and here you can see this is the way it works. It says, uh, uh, you can tell it if it's going to be NAVCOM 1 or NAVCOM 2. So you can just change that with a pop-up. So you can use the same instrument, just create another instance and just change it to 2. And you can run both radios with the same instrument. And then you can select here whether it's a uh, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, Uno, Nano, or hardware, some other hardware port. And then uh, you can select the channel, which when we run the installer on the on the Arduino to make it work with the Air Manager, we have to pick a channel. We can put up to, uh, I'm not sure how many, there are a bunch. There are A through P. So that's how many Arduinos it supports now. And then you pick a pin. In this case, we've got D2 for that. So then as you go down here, you've got the LCD, uh, the digital in, the clock, the load, the, uh, the uh, COM transfer button. And that's on channel A, D, 5, and so on. So, so basically what you do is you can wire this thing up or kind of randomly and then look at what each, as you put each pin in, you can just select it here and it'll automatically be connected correctly. And then you can see it goes through all the, uh, all the different functions. So you can set everything up without any programming. Uh, you can run uh, up to the limits of, uh, of your Arduino. If you have more than one Arduino in the same script, you could just have one on channel A and one on channel B and so on. So uh, it's very flexible. So I, I was uh, amazed how easy this was to uh, set up. And uh, this instrument I'm going to send to uh, Kyle, and he'll be able to let any of his users who, who want to use Air Manager uh, to use it. Air Manager does have uh, some nice features. You know, it's, uh, you can use the same plugin basically to create a home cockpit. It's expandable, so you can start off with maybe a touchscreen and work your way into hardware and just keep building and not have to support a bunch of different devices and and plugins. Pretty much it's a one-stop shop for cockpit building. So anyway, that's how it works. So uh, I know a lot of people use ArtSim and that's uh, free and also a great way to go. Um, uh, so I know it'll work just as well with that. Uh, my appraisal of the hardware is that it's it's pretty nicely designed. Uh, the only thing I might want is to make it a little narrower, maybe some smaller LCD so that you could put these side by side in a standard uh, six and a quarter. These are probably, uh, it's the, the faceplate that he has, which I, I'm going to, after this, I'm going to go make a little enclosure and mount it in the faceplate and show you this thing one last time, uh, ready to go. But um, the uh, faceplates are about seven and a half inches wide, and there's one for each radio, so you have to stack these things up. Uh, it, it would be nice if the board was smaller so that you could put two side by side and sneak them in there, but it would take a, a small... Uh, character display. I don't know if those are available and maybe that's on his radar for the future. But I'll tell you, this sure beats the heck out of SATAC or one of those things. Uh, and uh, the fact that you can use it with uh, with uh, ArtSim and Air Manager and other things makes uh, makes for a, uh, a very nice uh, option for, uh, for people who want, uh, you know, if you're going to do Pilot Edge or something like that, you just can't be fumbling around with the keyboard, keyboard and the mouse. Uh, at least I can't. I was a pilot. I'm not good with that, but I'm good with knobs and, and real flight control. So I would suggest uh, uh, something like this, uh, maybe a stack with the nav and the com, or a nav and two coms. Uh, as I said, you can, run, you can run this on an Uno, and a Nano has basically the same number of pins. So you could run these two radios daisy-chained on, daisy on a Nano, and you could run, uh, so two nanos, and you could be running uh, two navcoms. Uh, and the price is right for these little boards. I think they're about under $40 for, uh, for the uh, kit. So, uh, and, and as I said, I'm not, 
absolutely no no soldering expert, but I was able to put them together, put one together in about 30 minutes. Uh, and my hands aren't as steady as they used to be, so a big uh, visor can sure make that those little solder pads, uh, uh, you know, a magnifying visor can make those solder pads look a whole lot bigger. So I'll be back in a minute. I'll, I'm gonna gonna take a break here and make a little case for this thing, and then I'll put the face places face plates on and uh, show you what I come up with. So here's the completed project mounted in the box. It makes a nice unit. I guess you could create that radio stack as high as you wanted and put um, numerous radios and I believe there's an option for a transponder and an ADF in the uh, in the mix also but uh, with the same hardware. But uh, this makes for a nice looking little unit. I'm going to uh, demo it. You can see uh, of course, working with the uh, simulator and the small knob, transfer, uh, nav up and down, up and down, and let's swap. So uh, all told, it could build this in two or three hours. It's going to cost you uh, for the kits. I don't know about you, but for me, building it is half the fun. So I really like... Uh, I like building stuff, and uh, I was surprised. Now, pardon the uh, <laughs> the drywall screws. I, I built this uh, box from just scrap lumber I had laying around the house. Found some gray paint that I had. I would probably paint it black if I had uh, had planned ahead, and uh, and use some nice black or uh, pan head screws would look nicer. But uh, but the button action is nice. The encoder is nice. Uh, I give it a thumbs up. I think it'd be a great project for anyone who wants to add uh, radios to their simulator uh, inexpensively. Great project uh, to try. There again, you can run it with uh, ArdSim or SimVim, VimSim or whatever they call it now, or Air Manager. Of course, my preference because it gives you uh, uh, the ability to run instruments on an iPad, uh, Android, uh, Raspberry Pi, and uh, and you could run this unit on Raspberry Pi with the same program by just going into those uh, user ID or hardware user ID uh, properties that we showed you earlier and just select Raspberry Pi and the pin number and uh, you could run this. And the beauty of the Raspberry Pi is you can uh, also have a screen to display instruments uh, too. So uh, just a very flexible program. Uh, my uh, dream was to find a software that could run every the entire cockpit, build the entire cockpit and run everything, including uh, throwing in iPads and Android and so on. And uh, Air Manager is just about there, working on the NAV database now. And when they get that completed, be able to make some high-end NAV instruments using Air Manager too. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, uh, there's lots of options with uh, all the SIM platforms. The other advantage of, uh, that I like about Air Manager is that it can support this same software you're looking at right here that I showed you earlier will support FSX, prepared, and uh, also uh, X-Plane. So, so one radio can run all three. If you have multiple uh, multiple simulators and you're operating them, including Aerofly, by the way, uh, you can just uh, plug it in and it'll recognize it and it'll operate just fine. Didn't get around to changing this push button to the on-off. Uh, I'm sorry, it's on the second one. Didn't get a chance to swapping that around, adding that feature, but I'll try to do that later. Anyway, thanks to Kyle. I should tell you that he sent me the kit free to evaluate and to see if we could get it working with Air Manager. In this case, this answer is a big yes, and I'm excited to, uh, to try to support any of his future uh, products, too, for those who use Air Manager. I really do like what Kyle's doing. He's uh, trying to bring... Uh, hardware that's affordable to the market and uh, we always need that. I'll leave a, a link for his uh, company in the comments below along with information about Air Manager and ArtSim and SimVim. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you on another video soon.